So if you're wondering why I'm not in the dark like I usually am, it's because this episode is all in the edit page. I'm gonna show you two really cool title techniques. And I'm gonna break them down, show you exactly how to do it and show you how simple it is to do, but it looks fantastic. So this is the title sequence we're gonna make. And this is actually a music video I worked on a couple of years ago. Now, what I've done is I've created a sort of dual timeline setup space. So in here, I can go in and build it from scratch, but we can keep referring back to it here. And if you wanna know how to do that, just click in here and you click on here, you say display stacked timelines. I've made this nice and wide here. I've got a nice big, large screen on here and I've also got my inspector open. So you're gonna need those to do this. All right, let's break it down. Let's do the first one first. So we're in here and we've got this really nice text coming on and then this fly through. So our fly through text, let's go onto our blank timeline. So I need to just grab the media. So it's in the media pool. Here's the video. I've already done a mark in and mark out on there. I'm gonna get rid of the audio track. And we've just got this nice empty space at the beginning so we can do our fly through. And then we've got the flowers and the arm that we can do our background effect. All right, we just need a couple of seconds really to get the fly through done. And at this point here, I'm gonna press Command and B and just raise a bit. I wanna split these two clips into two. Right, section one is gonna be our fly through. I'm just moving up to video layer two. This is because the title actually has to sit underneath the video, which seems like illogical behavior, but I'm gonna show you exactly why that is. All right, let's take our media pool off and let's go and choose a title. I'm just gonna grab a basic title. I'm gonna drop it onto video layer one. I'm gonna just trim it back because this first section is gonna just be our fly through. So we can't see anything. And that's because our video is sitting above it, obviously. Now, if we highlight the video clip itself, we can go onto our inspector. So you need to open up your inspector here. And down here, you've got this composite mode and this allows us to change the mode. And you see, as I start going through different modes, we start to see the title underneath, depending which mode we choose. You can choose either darken or multiply will work as well for this effect. So either of those two. Let's now click on the title because we want to edit that. So it's just a basic title. I'm gonna change it to be the name of the band. And what we want is a nice big bold title because when we're doing our fly through, we don't want it to be just a few little pixels wide. So I'm gonna increase the size of it. Let's change the font as well. Let's get a nice big bold font. So something like, I don't know, Arial Black, something like that. Yeah, Arial Black, there we go. And let's make that nice and big. I don't want to go too big because we've got to actually fly through it. And I'm just gonna change the line, the line spacing, something more like that, that's good. But we now need to do the fly through. So to do that, we need to stay on the text with the text highlighted. We're gonna come off the actual title itself and go to settings. And this now needs keyframing. So we could just set a keyframe at the beginning and a keyframe at the end and just do a fly through like that and just animate it. But there's an easy way of doing that. If you come down to dynamic zoom here, let's just switch that on. It already has done a zoom for me, so let's have a look but it's obviously going the wrong way. All you gotta do is swap that round. Then you've got these tools here, so you can do an ease in, ease out, and ease in out. I'm gonna choose ease in, which should give us a little bit of a push in speed. And there you go, you see it accelerates as it gets out. Now we're still not far enough in. If you come down here, you've got these tools under here, and you'll see one of them says dynamic zoom. And if I click on that, you can switch it on and off like this just with that button there. But what you've got is the green is your start point and the red is your finishing point. It doesn't matter where you are on the clip, by the way, it just changes depending on the duration of your clip. And all I've got to do now is push in. So we're not seeing any of the black. So we're gonna push right into one of the letters, something like that. Now to see this properly, you need to take this off and let's have a look. And there we go, we're done. Now, what's great about that is it's working correctly already. Now, had I not done the blade to start with, this clip would have also be in darken or multiply mode. So just be careful of that because what you'll get is, if, you're not, if you don't do the blade first, what you'll see is this, and then you come to your video and it go black because it's in a different composite mode. So make sure that the second clip is in normal. That is pretty simple. Now, what if we want to animate the start of that? You'll notice on my one here, if we go back to the original, it actually animates on. It's got a really nice animation. So what we're gonna do is animate it. Now we could just take this text here and go to our transitions and apply, I don't know, uh, let's take something pretty garish. Let's do some circles on there. And there we go, something like that. <laughs> that was a pretty bad one, but 
you get the idea. Now I'm going to do an animated title using Motion VFX. Those of you who follow my channel for a while know that I use Motion VFX on all my YouTube episodes. I use them on all my production work and they're fantastic because they're pre-built animations. I'm not a motion graphics expert by any means. I'm not very good in fusion either. These titles do all that work for me. So let me show you how that works. I'm all the motion VFX that I've got installed are in here. I'm going to show you how to install them a little bit later in the video, but let's take a look at this new one I've got. So the one I used in this is called M Music Video 3. Here we go. So motion VFX are full of transitions, titles, LUTs, light leaks, all that sort of thing. So I need to go down to my actual titles here and it's this one here, this one here. So I'm going to grab and drop that on. I don't need to do the composite mode again because that's already done. All I need to do is animate this. Now you see this red lines appeared. That's because these effects are a little bit process heavy because they're actually working in fusion in the background. That's what I love about these. I don't need to be in fusion. I just do it all in the edit page. And you see that went red and it went blue. It's because I've got my render cache on. So if I go up to here, go to playback, switch to render cache and I can either go to smart or use this. So smart or work it out itself. User, I'm telling it when to do the caching. So let's play that through. What we need to do now is customize this. So again, with the motion VFX, I love being able to customize these. So you've got settings, which is where we did the dynamic zoom and all that stuff, or we can click on here on the title and we've now got control of this motion VFX without going into fusion. So the first thing you notice is the controls have an in and an out. This is for the animation. So do you want to animate in, do you want to animate out, or do you want both? So we're going to switch off the out animation because we're going to do that fly through. So it's only going to animate on. Let's have a look at that. And there it goes. Right. And then the other nice thing with this is the font that I'm using here is not a font I've got installed on my system. This has come with this particular pack and it's a really nice font. So I'm going to go with that. And what I need to do now, I'm going to switch on 4K quality down at the bottom, by the way. And I'm also going to take off all these little elements here. So I'm going to keep my main title control. Let's just change that to say Delta Sleep while I'm here. And uh, let's make it a little bit bigger as well. So scale that right up something like something like maybe that's a bit big something like that and all I've got to do now is take off the other one so just switch them off like so or I could just delete the title itself let's just get rid of those and depending on what the effects you're using will depend on what these menus say so some of them have got like gradients and all that sort of stuff you can change all that in there so it animates on and then it doesn't do anything and it jumps off now the reason for that is we've got to put that dynamic zoom back on so I can do dynamic zooms to motion VFX as well. Just go to the settings tab, switch on my dynamic zoom. As we already know, we need to swap the order of that. So it zooms in, not out. And then we just need to change it to ease in. So we get a nice little speed ramp on it. And then the other thing we want to do is make sure that it finishes inside a letter. So that should now give us a full reveal. And there we go. Now, two things happening there that are a bit weird. It's pink, which we don't want. We want it to be the natural color of the video. And that's because on the title itself, it's already got a color built into it. You can change the font here, by the way, you can change the sizing, you can change everything. I'm going to click on here and you need this to be white because the composite mode we're in, we want it to be white in order to not add any tone to that video. So that should now look correct. So it animates on, flies through, and then we're good to go. What's different with this one with the original one is we had a little pause at the beginning of this one. So it's static and then it flies through, which I think is much nicer. So on this one, I'm going to split it in half. So if I press B, I can just blade the title. So that's now split into two. Now the problem I've got now is it's going to animate on twice. So what we need to do is just correct that because it's done a duplicate of itself. So this one's in, we need this one to have no animation at all. We want it already moving. It's got the dynamic zoom on it already. So if we look from here, because remember the dynamic zoom changes depending on the duration of your clip. So that's worked, but we've actually got two dynamic zooms going on now. So what we're going to do is this one is take off the dynamic zoom. So if I go back to my settings, switch it off like that, and that should now animate on, but not off. And there we go. So it animates on, we've taken the out off, we've taken the dynamic zoom off. So when it gets to here, it's the same size and starts its zoom. The other way I could have done that is split it to start with and then just add the dynamic zoom to this shot here. But that is showing you how really simple that is to get a really effective fly through effect. I love this effect.
So just before we do the second title, I just want to thank Motion VFX. They've sponsored this episode. I use them all the time, as you know. They're on all my videos, all my production work. The quality is fantastic. How to install them is really easy. You just go to this application that sits on your computer. It's called M Installer. These are some of the ones that I've got, and you can install them on two devices. So each one is activated within here. So if I want to install this one, it tells me I've not actually installed it yet. So stick that on. Transitions, LUTs, light leaks, and obviously animated motion graphics. And if I now go back to DaVinci Resolve, it will appear there really easy. If you want to buy some more or have a look at what they've got, there's some free ones in here as well. Just go to the store. Be careful that you choose DaVinci Resolve. You don't want to download a Final Cut Pro one if you're working on DaVinci Resolve. Click in here and it'll show you all the ones that they've got. You can get a little preview in here as well. So I've got this one, MTuber 3. This is a really good one. And you can watch a trailer how to do it. You can download it free for 14 days. Give it a try. Click the link in the description. They've often got offers and promotions on. If you click that link, it'll take you straight to that. All right, let's get back on and have a look how we do the text behind a foreground. So this effect seems like it's complicated, but let's just have a look at what's going on. We're playing it through. And I've got an animated title at the beginning, and then it sits behind these things. And it's really easily controlled using a feature called Depth Map. Now, Depth Map is found in the color page. That's where you've probably seen me use it before in the color page. But you can actually access quite a lot of the open effects in the edit page itself. We actually need three layers of video for this effect. So I need to move this one up a layer. I've already built three video layers on here. That's going to sit up there. And then what I need to do is grab a title. So this one, I use a new one that I've installed as well. It's called Old Money. And the effect called Initials here. All right, so I'm going to drag and drop this down. I'm going to change its duration. And again, we can't see what's going on with it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this one. I'm going to press D just to disable it temporarily because I want to set this up. Let's take off the dynamic zoom. There's no dynamic zoom happening on this one. I'm going to go to the actual title itself. So I'm now accessing the control so I can customize this. And what I want here, let's put the 4K quality on. Content controls at the top. This controls the overall layer. So you see here we've got text one and text two. So text two is the M. I'm going to make that say soul. And text one is going to say old. That's the name of the track. Now the content controls control both those titles at the same time. And then you find that each individual text has got its own control as well. So I can change the positioning and all that sort of stuff in here. Let's just reset that. Now in order to position this correctly, I'm going to take a copy of this. I'm going to press option and just drag. So that's our video clip. I'm going to press D to undisable it. And now our text is sitting on top. This is what we want. So this is going to become our background. This is our text, and with this element, we're going to make this the foreground. So this will be the background, text, and foreground. All right, I'm going to leave this one disabled at the minute so we can concentrate on the text. I'm going to highlight it, and let's just get this in position. Something like that, and I want the soul. I just want to move it across a bit because it's blocking the word old. So if I go to text 2 down here, we can move the x-axis here and the y. So it's something like that. And what's nice is you get this little outline on the font, so it looks really effective. But what I want to do is change the color of that as well. And I'm going to sample it actually from the video itself. It's a really nice way of doing it. Something like that. Yeah, there you go. That looks nice. Now, if I grab that and drop it into one of these blocks, I can now match that to the first line, like so. But it still doesn't do anything. All it's going to do is animate on, and we're not blocking. And to do this, I'm going to use Depth Map. Now, you've seen me use Depth Map in the color page, as I said. It's in Open Effects here, and these are all the blurs and all the things that you find in the color page. And down here, we've got Depth Map. So I'm going to drop that onto my video. Now, we get this. Now, whatever is white becomes the foreground, and what's black is the background. So we need to just adjust this. Now, I'm on DaVinci Resolve version 19 on here. I've still got active jobs on here. I can't upgrade to 20 just yet, but I am going to show you what this looks like in version 20 at the end of this video. All right, so let's go in and see what's going on. Better quality, always good, I think. Depth map preview is on, so I need to adjust these levels. So what I want is the arms and the flowers in the foreground. So I'm going to adjust my near limit, and I'm going to adjust my far limit. And we, by playing around with these two sliders, we get our first starting point in here. So something like that. Now I can make this a little bit smarter if I click on isolation. We can see what's going. It's not actually making that much difference in this. 
And let's have a look what's happening in post-processing. Yeah, so I'm gonna leave those off. The more of these you got on, the harder work it is to actually render. But this should give us a pretty good idea of what's going on. If I take that depth map preview off, and there you see we've got it. We've got the arm going in front of the letters and the flowers. So now they are the foreground and this is the background. If I didn't have this layer on here, by the way, if I disable it, you'd get that, okay? It would just be blacked out. So you need the layer underneath to give you the background. So let's take a look at how that's looking. I'm not gonna get real-time playback on this because the depth map is a heavy effect, especially when I've set it to better. But what I can do is just step through and just check that our text is actually going behind, which it is. And it should be blocking by her hand as well, which it does, so that's great. And that's the animation out for our text there. All right, so that looks great. Now, what you will notice inside the flowers, we don't get the text coming through. And that's because that's the best this depth map preview is gonna give us. In version 20, the new AI depth map has greatly improved this. So I'm gonna test that in a minute on my laptop. I'm gonna export this exact project out to my laptop and have a look at how much better job it does in version 20. So I've imported the timeline and everything's come across fine. Let's just play it through and check. So this is on my laptop. I'm running DaVinci Resolve 20.0.1. This is the full studio version. And you see that we still have the problem here. The text is still not coming through the flowers. That's because this is created on the original depth map. And it does keep those properties if you convert it to version 20. The other thing to note is that my animated titles are working because I've got these motion VFX packs installed on this laptop too. Remember, you get two licenses with every purchase. So motion VFX, and there's the same one that I had on my studio one, the one that's in my studio, and this is on my laptop. So it's easy to interchange between the two computers. All right, let's see if we can get this depth map looking any better. That's the whole point of this. So if I click on here, the reason it still doesn't look good is if I guess my effects, we've got AI depth map for sure, but the quality is legacy. So it's the better quality, but it's still the legacy settings. So what I'm gonna do is switch that off and I'm gonna go down to my open effects. I'm gonna choose depth map, drag and drop it on. And we're now gonna use the new AI depth map that comes with version 20 that we all know is vastly improved. So let's see how well we can get this to go with the text behind those flowers. All right, so I'm gonna to go to better mode, obviously. And let's click in here. So the settings are a little bit different, but what I want is that background to be black and the foreground to be a good solid white. If it's gray, we're gonna get half mix. So I'll bring that through and already that is looking miles better there. We've got detail inside the flowers. That was a solid block before. So let's go and just check where a hand comes through. There it is. And that looks miles better as well. You can even see the outside of a bracelet there. Let's see if we can get that any better. What I want is to see the flowers come through. I'm gonna isolate specific depth. Let's see if we can get it even better here. Okay, now that doesn't seem to be doing anything. You've got a finesse tool here as well. I'll take that isolation off. And that's, this has now really made that fine detail. That's fantastic. All right, let's switch the depth map preview off and that will allow us to see the video itself. And let's get to a relevant point in the video so we can see the flowers. Okay, it's running a little bit slow because it is a heavy application. I'm only on my laptop, but that is indeed working. It's much better than it was before. In fact, what we can do let me reposition this text so it actually goes behind the flowers. Oh, you can see the U, but let me just reposition it so we can actually see what's going on. There you go. So you can see the D coming through the flowers there. It's at, that is absolutely brilliant. The other thing I was going to do as well was switch off the animated out on that title as well. So let's just go there because I don't want it to actually fade out. It starts fading off and this is a hard cut into the next part of the song. Let us back over there and we're good to go. That needs to now do its render cache. And there we go. So if you do enjoy this sort of content, think about subscribing. Most people don't, and I get it, that's absolutely fine. But if you don't wanna miss any of my future episodes, hit subscription, hit the notification bell as well. Give it a thumbs up if you've liked this. Drop me a comment if you enjoy me doing stuff in the edit page. Let me know what else you'd like to see. Let me know your favorite Motion VFX packs and all that sort of stuff. So I'd just like to say thank you to Motion VFX for sponsoring this episode. I love Motion VFX, you know I do. I've been using them for years. You can check all my episodes out. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.